Hello, everyone, and welcome to Epi Aussie Tech Heads, episode 275. How are you? I hope you are well. It's still raining on the Gold Coast. I had a little bit of a sun, but it's still raining. So hopefully it's not raining in your part of the woods. And the cricket's on tomorrow, so hopefully it's not raining. Where is that on tomorrow, Sydney? I don't know. But anyway, welcome. Episode 275. Hello, Lounge. Live at dot com. You can come and join us live every Thursday night. Live dot the dot com. Watch the taping of the show. Uh, audio only. Audio only. You can stream it live on the shout on the shoutcast at radio dot the dot com. And you can listen to uh, like the past two episodes or other episodes on the network as well on the Secret Hub network, which is only a couple of shows. Which reminds me, if you've got a show and you want it rebroadcast. On the, on the radio, so on the live audio stream that just ticks around, you know, 24-7, 24-7, your show will eventually come back around. Uh, if you've got a show, uh, audio or video, give me, a, give me a buzz, give me an email, glenn at aussietechheads.com.au. Let's, uh, let's see if we can, uh, you know, b b build, a, build a castle. Let's see if we can build it. Uh, live video, obviously that's what we're doing now. Uh, paper.aussietechheads.com.au and also uh, pre-recorded video on YouTube dot com slash the secret hub welcome eric how you doing hello sir how do you do hello lounge yes not too bad uh how's your week been pretty busy since coming back from uh holidays uh, it's been it look it's i i can't complain i'm just lazy <laughs> <laughs> oh, aren't we all aren't we all just can't get into it it's hard isn't it it's hard mm. uh very hard yep. very hard but uh look next week is probably the week where you pick it up is it like you know a week back and Back in yeah, design. it takes about that long. I think I'll hit my straps next week. I'll, yeah. hit, well, I'll hit something next week. Yeah. <laughs> Watch out. So, um, yeah, all the all the TV shows are coming back, and some that probably shouldn't have. No, I yeah, that's <laughs> right. And some that won't, and they should. Yeah, which is usual for the for the networks. That's right. Like, there's a show. Look, I can't get into this excess baggage business. Um, <laughs> give me give me the biggest loser any day. This excess baggage. Ah. I, I, I'm going to admit that I've been watching both. Like often, on I, I alternate between the two. Well, look, I have and watched one, one thing. I noticed, Glenn. Yes. They have one thing in common. These shows. Fat the people. only thing that got in common. What's that? They're all fat. That's right. Well, hopefully not at the end. Hopefully not at the end. That, that's what it's all about. But um, but yeah. So I've been watching and thinking. Oh, I wish. I wish. But <laughs> we'll see how we go over eight weeks. Um. All right. So what else has been going on? Uh, not much. Uh, not a lot. It's been raining like hell down here. We had one really hot day on um, on Monday, and I had to do training, and I had to do a 5K run in this stinking heat, and it was really, really hot. And then since Tuesday, I've had a jumper on, as you can see, and it's now Thursday. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. We've had a we've had a bit of a yeah, a bit of a time of it as well. So um but anyway, that's flooding what, up there? Uh look it has no well, not flooding, but it's been wet. It's been wet. Right. A lot lot of mould around. Let's, let's right. put it that okay. way. Okay, you want you want to get rid of her. <laughs> oh, hopefully starting to smell. And okay, <laughs> so all right, what else is going on? Let's have some news, eh? Let's let's get into a news story. For those for those of you who don't um, who don't go all the way with us throughout the hour of the show, Garth comes on at the second half of the show, but he's going to come on at the first half this week because uh, he's got oh. he, he talks about Android apps, I mean Apple apps, <laughs> iOS apps, and he's got one for us tonight. And it is probably a cross platform app. Uh, he had a good one last week. Hey, tell that was great. Mm -hmm. That was a great one. Been using that breaker breaker all the time. <laughs> 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 so that is good. Okay, uh, where are we going to start? Let, let's let's start with a big a sting. The police, they've been they've been stinging down in um, in Sydney somewhere down the, the near your neck of the woods, Ashfield. Well, not not it's not it's a it's a fair way from me. <laughs> it is in Sydney, Sydney metropolitan area. Yep. Uh, I don't want to insult anyone that lives in Ashfield, but let's just say it's nowhere near me. Detectives raided a unit at Ashfield, at uh, in the city's west, at about. 10 past midnight on Wednesday. So that's... A, that's best, a, time, best time to raid them when they least expect it. Well, this is right. 10 past midnight. They seized USB devices, computers and documents related to alleged copyright offences involving pay TV channels and movies. So some dude in Ashfield hooking in his aerial to the computer uh, of the... Uh, probably the Foxtel unit and probably streaming Foxtel out. No, he actually was um, selling it Oh well, yes, he, he, he. No, you're right. He was doing exactly that, but he was selling a, a little USB dongle as an Apple. He was calling it Apple TV. Oh, what an idiot! Yeah, 
A 42. It had an Apple logo and everything on it. What an idiot. A um, 40. Why did that happen? A 42 year old man at the unit was charged with several copyright offences. The man was allegedly involved in large scale and sophisticated operation based in China. Oh, those little Chinese, they know what's going on, don't they? Which supplies oh, yes. illegal access to copyrighted material involving subscription, subscription TV. Uh, so we will be alleging the revenue generated by this illicit operation was about $70 million a year, Detective Coffin said. So it seems there are a lot of people out there who think it's an acceptable thing to do. Yeah, as well. Yes. If you can get mm. it, good for you. But, um, but yeah, well, obviously it, it, you don't want to do that because obviously the copies are coming down. But $70 million a year. And, um, that's not bad for something illegal. Yeah, that's not bad. So, but who, but who are the idiots getting duped by this? That's my question. Yeah, look, you probably find that you know how like you you go around the place and you see all the the Chinese people. They they've got all those big satellite dishes and everything. You know, they're all picking up their yes, own. They're yes. all the Chinese. They're probably yeah, that they're, those type yeah, of yeah Portuguese guys. Portuguese idol. Yeah, <laughs> they're probably trying to pick up. You know, that's probably that's I don't know. I've got no idea, but um. But obviously, there's a market for it. Like, who doesn't want something for free if you if you don't get caught, of course? But uh, exactly. <laughs> but uh, seventy million a year—that's a lot of money. So, what was he? Do- he was. Um, did you know a bit about this? Or well, he was. He was. How was he like sending out, sending it out? Like, what was he doing? Well, obviously, he knew how to hack into a satellite signal, R- and so that's he- the main thing. He was he was illegally accessing satellite signals, and then selling that access to people illegally when he didn't have a license to obviously access this. So selling set top boxes for five hundred dollars. So and he then w- he was subscriptions for ninety dollars a month. Why don't you just join Foxtel? Foxtel yeah. IQ costs you nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And you can get Foxtel for fifty bucks a month. <laughs> so why yeah, I don't. Yeah, that, that's crazy, isn't it? I don't understand that. But but he must have had to have like decoded or cracked the. the yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. They, 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 he's got the. He's got the. There code. are decoders mm. that he he's obviously got access to. Yeah, right. Um, and yeah, he's he's look. He's no doubt he's probably an engineer mm. of some description. Knows what he's doing. Knows how to point the dish in the right direction. Otherwise, you don't get anything. And um, and yeah, he charges and away, charges people. Way he went. Wow. That's yeah. um, yeah, no good, and it's in Sydney, so obviously all the profit was going to China, so it's double bad. We don't want to go on over there. If it stayed in Australia, it would be half bad. But well, prof- if it stayed in Australia, <laughs> the government would just piss it up against the wall. So what's well, the point? This is true. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. That's probably true. Uh yeah. All right. So uh, you got a story? Did you? You had something similar? Is it to that story? Well, that was the, the well. They busted a second person today, and the headline is. Police raid Sydney piracy outfit and warn, warn customers, we're coming for you. Police have raided a second store in Sydney as part of a worldwide 70 million pirate television outfit. This one was, yesterday's one was uh, at Ashfield. And today, uh, a, someone in Lane Cove was arrested. Now, was this the, was this the fake Apple TV? Yes, both of these are the fake Apple TV. USB keys with Apple insignia on it. So a man had been arrested in Sydney after being caught selling access to a private television and movie service sold using counterfeit devices bearing the Apple trademark. The premises yes. of what Qmart. It, calling it Apple TV, what a knob. Oh, I know. It wouldn't bring much attention to yourself. A retailer nah. from the Sydney suburb. Um, yeah, well, that's blah, 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 blah. He branded it the iPad 6 TV. Apple iPad yeah. 6 TV. Yeah, yeah. The only people that got suckered into that are the people who know nothing about technology, obviously, and um, and who are greedy. Who thought, oh, yeah, let's get this. Let's, I can get everything. I can watch, you know, Greek Idol. Yeah, yeah. 1,100, uh, 1100 Pirate TV channels, ESPN, CWN, HBO, Fox and BBC, and 1,000 first released movies on demand, including Hugo, Tintin, Mr. Popper's Penguins. Over six yeah, he would, he would, he he would have probably just hacked into you know Hulu or something like that. He was right into it. He was right into it. I think yeah. they're, they're probably both in the same dude. Yeah, this it is. It's the same same people. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're going crazy. Yeah, right. Allegedly, That's allegedly, allegedly going we're gonna, crazy. We're going to say allegedly. That's right. Well, allegedly going crazy. It would have been a nice um, nice wake up call at ten past twelve. <laughs> oh yeah. Catch him off guard. Catch him off guard. All right, now Facebook. You got a uh, Facebook story, I hear. I've got a couple of them, but the, the, it's just they're pretty much two the same story 
written twice by two different people. Um, yes, they've filed for their IPO, these highly anticipated IPO. They're looking to raise between five and ten billion dollars, which will value them at around one hundred billion. Eight years after its computer hacking CEO Mark Zuckerberg started the service. So, um, yeah, he, he, as it works out at the moment, they've got um, this will surpass the one point nine billion raised by Google in two thousand and four, and could be one of the highest one of the largest IPOs in recent time. Facebook said it produced $3.71 billion in revenue in 2011, up from $1.97 billion a year earlier. But, uh, yeah, but it's a big jump. It is a big jump. It is a big jump. But, uh, yeah, initially Zuckerberg wasn't too keen on getting it uh, floated. But he doesn't want to. He didn't want to do it because it is a hassle. You know, when you're private, you can run it the way you want it. Mm. You don't have to meet expectations that the market expects you to meet on a quarterly basis. So he's going to be under the pump. But, but I, think, I think he'll slowly just disappear from there. But I think what he, what he, he what started turning his mindset around was uh, apparently, uh, and you might know more about this, whether it's just uh, significant to America or it doubles over here as well in Australia. But uh, the, once the private company gets to a certain size, uh, I'm not sure whether in employees or monetary value or whatever, they've got to start releasing their financials anyway. Um, so... Yeah, I think over there, yeah, you're right about that here. When you get to a certain size, you you, you release them, it's sort of semi-public. So, for example, if you were start, you eventually started turning over $50 million a year um, and you had, you know, whatever, 3,000 staff, but you were still privately held, Yeah. ASIC, ASIC would say, well, you've got to lodge accounts, audited accounts with us because you're a medium-sized business now, and you lodge it with ASIC. Yeah. Now, if someone, but it's not publicised. Says, "Hey, he's lodged his accounts. Let's go and have a look." It's, yeah, okay. it's freely available. You could log in and, and you know pay twenty dollars to access that information. Mm. And I, th- but I think I'm, that's what that's what turned similar similar in the states. But in America, when you hit a certain number of shareholders, you have to go public. Right. right. I think it's something like um, when you've got five hundred shareholders. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it was something like that, and I think he's 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 trying to thought, or he, he was made he's he's forced trying to thought, whatever. He came around to thinking it that he goes, well, if I've got to divulge it anyway, I might as well have some money out of it. So um, well, that's right. If I'm going to, have to start filing all this shit and go and having to meet the same expectations effectively, yeah, as a public company, with yeah. the same hassle and the, and the same expense, well, I might as well get twenty eight billion out of it. Because you're probably right in the in the fact that he might just slowly disappear from. Well, that's the rumor. The rumor is that he'll just slowly start giving control over. Mm-hmm. He'll be like a Bill Gates in the background because he, he loves developing the software and the product. Because his main interface. focus, because he's always said he's, and even now his main focus, even after the float, he wants the main focus to be developing apps for, for the for the platform rather than you know just just developing things to make the money. He wants to develop the usability. That's right. As well as make I money. I think the Sher- Cheryl Sandberg will be the woman that's pretty much running it. I think. Mm. And she's the she's the Tim Cook of Facebook, you know, the chief operating officer. Yeah. Well, well, while Steve Jobs was off but evangelizing I mean, like, and developing products, she was he was making sure that you know the supplies came in, they were efficient, yeah. uh, but you look, know, that sort of stuff. Well, how, how much would how much would Zuckerberg be worth? Like for a first gig, After it's not this, too bad. Tw- twenty eight tw- twenty eight billion. Yeah, for a first gig, it's not too bad. Like won't be his last. No, like I, I'd be if I was him, I, I wouldn't really mind letting it go, like control. You mean I wouldn't mind let? I'd keep the yeah, stock. Yeah, but it's and, like it's like your baby, though, isn't it? These well, guys true. are really they're very, they're very passionate. It's very hard for them to let go. But you could, you it's, could, and it's not the money. They don't yeah. care about the money. But maybe if you could just sit down and you just said, well, okay, this is my first gig. I've made a lot of money, and now I can do something else that I really want to do. That's right. You know, that's and, right. And, he can uh, he can buy the internet. But yes. <laughs> He could have a go, um, or or he could invest it with the current government and see how fast they can waste it. Yes. Well, now you, now you had an MBN story you were saying before because I've got something not really related, but <laughs> it might stick in there somewhere. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, let's. I'm scrolling down. Here's my NBN. Here we go. Here it says here, Telstra Corporation has warned or complained that the NBN. NBN Co's pricing strategy could result in unnecessarily high prices 
for high-speed internet services, according to a report by the Australian. Blah, 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 blah. The... Well, uh, hang on a minute. I've just done something there. Oh, what's happened? Oh, something's happened. Hang on. Whoa. Whoa. Back there. Back there. There you go. Sorry about that. The telecommunications company has warned the competition watchdog to examine whether NBN Co. should adopt an alternative pricing model to its two-tariff pricing plan, which which would have internet service providers face charges for baseline connection fee and usage base fees for the amount of data carried through the network. So what they're basically saying is that the contract is not in their favour. And I was listening to, I'd hate to admit this, I've got this app on my um, iPhone called TuneIn. Oh, yes, and I've heard can, of that. Yeah, you, you've got it there, right? And you can just yeah. listen to any radio station. So I... I I happened across Mr. Alan Jones. Oh, good morning, it's Alan Jones. <laughs> and um, You don't like old AJ? No, look, he's all right. He's a little bit alarmist. but So you've got to really filter what he says yeah. to make sure you get the facts he's and not, funny. not the drama. Yeah, he's funny. You, I don't want to get the drama. He really hooks into them, though. Um, and he was saying that Telstra and Optus have so far not signed the final agreement because in the final agreement it states that if you have a beef with us about something, like we'll say in the agreement, we'll say we promise to do this and you promise to do that. But if we go against your our word and do something completely different that that pretty much mucks you up and, and costs you money or, or it's a breach of contract, mm. um, you've got no recourse. You can't go to the ACCC. Basically, we can do what we want. Well, and that, that's why they're not signing it. And, and he was going off his head saying, it's the typical government monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> but look, it, it won't it won't last that way forever. Like, uh, no, look, it won't. Because look, I was it reading won't. through the. I heard Tony Abbott saying he's going to repeal it. Is, it. is he serious? Is he going to repeal this whole thing? Like, leave the infrastructure what's already there there, but just stop it in its tracks. Like, I, look, I don't know. That's that's um, not good either. On that's, look, on one hand, I understand why he wants to do it. On the other hand, I understand why it should be built. In mm. the middle there, unfortunately, is the fact that it's this current government that's got the job of building it, and that's where the problem is. Because I know, it's like... The fact, it's not the fact that it has to be built. Liberal, liberal governments in the past have built other infrastructure projects, roads, the Pacific Highway, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, for example, Labor government in, a, in, in New South Wales was in for 15 years, and the Pacific Highway up at Bulladeela where many, many people mm. have died because yeah. it just wouldn't be upgraded. It was just not getting done. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, and that's classic. And that's, a, that's across the country. Oh, yeah. And well, as soon as a Liberal government comes in, they'll continue with the infrastructure project, but they'll do it properly, they'll do it on time, they'll do it on budget, and they'll do it with the quality that it deserves. Now, I know that's not always the case, but, you know, the Labor government, they just cannot do anything right. Because I know, like, but, but like, just getting back to like the, the actual uh, MBN and that, like, we got our our friend Ozzy down in Melbourne. There, he's um he's struggling with the Optus cable. He's you know some oh nights God. he's only getting th- he's he's he signed up to the hundred meg down and two meg up uh, program, but he's only some nights he he, he struggles on on three down. Like That's it's you, you can't it's unusable he, he unusable for what he wants to do and he can't do it. But then you know he rings him up and he says, well, that on one hand. They're saying that okay, we're not putting in the in, we're not upgrading the infrastructure or whatever because of the MBN, but then on on the other hand, everyone's going well. The MBN's never going to be completed, so we're we're sort of stuck. Th- this is the we're problem. The these organisations are stuck because what are they going to do? If they start if they start investing because they're going to get Optus is going to get paid a set amount of money from the NBN. That's locked mm. in eight hundred and forty million dollars or whatever I think it's it is. around that amount. Yeah. Now, if they start thinking, you know what, we've got to upgrade our network, we've got to spend $100 million. Hmm. Now well, They're not going to do it. You know, you, you flick a coin, NBN's never going to happen, I've got to spend $100 million, that's fine, we won't lose customers and we'll have a better network, we'll get even more customers, that's fine. But what if the NBN does go through, they've just spent $100 million for nothing hmm. because they get, they, they're not going to get that money back. Now, but and, and leading into my little quickie here, uh, someone else is getting fibre to the home. Another country who's got a 10 to 20 forward year plan, so they say. Only the countries with a 10 to 20 forward year plan are, are good like this, they reckon. Israel, their state-owned electric company, 
hopes to roll out its own high-speed national broadband network. The, tele- the technology is known as fibre to the home, which sounds almost the same, if not the same, as the NBN s- setup. So um, I don't know what's going on there. Like Israel's doing it, you know, and um, apparently there were some stats. They're, they've got a smaller footprint, though, don't forget. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. They're, they're, but they are, as, as that story went on, they are still looking at a decent time frame. They're looking at, say, 10%. Uh, connection in three years, I think, with I think seventy percent, or maybe close to a hundred percent in um, in seven years. So it's yeah. still a well, while. But then again, yeah, it's seven it years. Seven years for us would have been next year. It would have been two years two years away. That's right. That's yeah. right. But, That's um, exactly right. Yeah. But anyway. From announcement to um, basically, you know, they say from cradle to grave. This this project is from grave to grave. It hasn't fucking left the grave. <laughs> Definitely hasn't left the embryo. Oh, yes. yes. All right. Well, after all that, now what are we going to move on to? We're going to move on to something else now. And uh, and I'll be buggered why this program keeps doing that. But anyway, I'm going to select this area again. And we're going to, we're going to spice things up a, up a bit with a, a Garth, Garth's review of another app. So are you, re- are you ready for Garth? Here he comes. I'm ready. Garth's uh, dropped in once again and he's got another app for us. Wow. Garth, what have you got? Hello. Good evening, Glenn. Good evening. <laughs> what <are> you <laughs> Tonight, what you I, like, I wanted to love, blah, 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 look at another free app. Yes. Um, so having said it's free, I know people have paid for it previously, and it can be up to ten bucks. I know, but it's been free for a while now that I've that I've seen it. Um, for those of us, you know, that don't have Siri, Blingo is the way to go. It can be a bit hit and miss, depending on your accent. A lot of people have a lot of success. Other people, you know, for me, I might usually try things once or twice um, and it'll get me. So what it basically does is let you send uh, emails, SMSs, Twitter updates, Facebook updates, straight just by speaking to your phone. So as simple as saying, update Twitter, you know, recording with Glenn or... And, um, yeah. Yeah. Send an, you know, text Sally <laughs> message running late for dinner. Yeah, no, and you've been you've been using this on the side of the road, so it's it uh, understands pretty well yeah, what's going yeah. on. Yeah, so that's right into the to the headphones, headphone microphone, obviously. Yeah, but yeah, just walk on the side of the road, and um, yeah, it seems to work fine. So that's um, free from the iTunes store. I from the App Store, yep. From the App from Store, the app that's store. right. Yeah. And it's uh, V Lingo, the letter Lingo. V. Yeah, letter V L I N G O, and away we go. And away we go with bingo, <laughs> but it's blingo. All right. <laughs> so um, yeah, so you can go yeah. So text everything, text your Twitter updates, whatever. If you think if you want ever wanted Siri, want to know what it's all about, well I think blingo. If you got the iPhone, what three GS or iPhone four, it'll work. Three GS or four, it'll work. No worries at all. Yeah, and you, you know, in some ways, I like it better than Siri. In that you don't have to have the whole conversation, send a text, okay, where do you want to send it? Oh, can you send it to this person? Okay, what yep. do you want to say? It's just send a text to Sally saying this. Yep, sweet as. All right, so there's another great tip from Garth. All right, thank you, Garth. We'll see you next time with another great tip. See you later, Glenn. Bye-bye. All right, thanks, Garth. Lingo. So give that a shot. I think I'd loaded that up once, but um, like all good things, they don't, uh, <laughs> don't go according all to... good things that you're on, you're on an Android don't go according to plan. Or no, <laughs> that's right. But uh, yeah, so there we go. Now that's all right. Now before the show, if you ca- if you tune in live on live.secrethub.com, you will see at seven o'clock tech webcast from the guys at techwebcast.info. So go and have a look at them. Check their podcast out. I think uh, this week, what was it, episode one seven two from memory? Uh, they had Jabber on it. So if you're a fan of Jabber, go and have a listen to them. They they did an interview with him. So that's all good. That's all good. Uh, now let, let's keep uh, moving on. What else have we got going, Eric? Uh, well, you people in Brisbane are going to get your own Apple store, apparently. Oh, whoopie Bris- doos! Brisbane looks to be close to getting its first Apple store in the CBD, with the tech retail giant posting job openings for a new inner city store. No, oh. he's understood the store will open on the site of the former Dimex bookstore because we all know bookstores are doing well. Uh, which is in the historic MacArthur Chambers building, part of the MacArthur Central Complex on the corner of Edward and Queen Streets. I think I know where that is. Um, Oh, yeah? Last April, plans were submitted to Brisbane City Council for a large 
three-level shop in the Heritage Building, which was constructed in the early 1930s. So th- they like these Heritage Buildings? You know, they, they like the, the wow factor, don't they? Yeah, it's about style. It's Steve Jobs has the or had has the aesthetic. He is an aesthetic master, and mm. I think he's in imbued that uh, that uh, sort of thing into the whole company, which is good. Otherwise, you'd be walking into a Harvey Norman store. And we all know what they look like. Yeah. Now, uh, Apple on and sticking with Apple here, and and maybe a little bit of a story after the passing of Steve Jobs. Uh, well, b- b- before he died, uh, he was in talks with the music industry and also Neil Young, if you might remember, or if you're too young, you won't remember, but he, he's a singer. You won't remember. If you're young, you won't remember Neil Young? No, but he's, um, but alongside other digital music retailers, they're talking about uh, high, selling high-fidelity tracks in iTunes now, and, and also retooling the iPods to be compatible with them. The most music downloads, which are currently MP3 or AAC formats, which we know, and, and love. Uh, and uh, yeah, so Jobsy wanted to have for the more the more audio aficionados, or audio files, as they are commonly known, he wanted a, a, a somewhere where you could download, uh, you know, the, the, the true, the, the true fullness of the song, the, the whole song, so, you know. So basically how it sounded on the vinyl. Yes. On the vinyl yes. record. Well, industry right. standard MP, to give you an idea what he's sort of on about, industry standard MP3 files, uh, have only about 5% of all the sounds that were contained in the original recording. Yeah, which isn't is, that a piece of piss? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, which is, well, and the original co- recording, which is the master. Because the high-def music files are significantly larger, um, Neil Young described the system that would allow the device to download it while the user is asleep. Now, despite the availability of uh, high-quality music sold by e-commerce websites, consumers so far have expressed little interest uh, many musicians, mu- many musos are embracing the idea of giving fans pristine recording like the Rolling Stones have done. But anyway, so I'm just going to go into that uh, I- into that part there in a sec. I, I just want you know, you know, if you had a good set of speakers, yeah, and nice, crisp, full audio, like you, you know, the proper what where it was played, you heard, mm. that would be brilliant. Yeah, yes, yes, that's right. Look, I remember. Uh, a couple oh, a while ago now, they brought out. Remember all this when digital audio came out? You know, five point one surround and all this sort of stuff. Yep, yep. And I don't know if have you got a five point one surround system. I do indeed. I have three of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you know how good that sounds. You're very good. Yeah. So, uh, so what happened? There, there was uh, they brought out an Elvis Presley DVD, right? Right. But it was an audio <laughs> only. They had no pictures. It was audio because they had, they wanted to embrace the five point one sound. So, sure. they, so they remastered a few of the songs, and I'll tell you, it, it sounds great. It, it sounds great. How big would a three-minute song be on something like this? How big? Would, what size file do you think it would be? Oh, well, I don't actually know. I didn't actually look at that, but I know a normal WAV file is probably mm. probably a three-minute song would be around 30, 35 meg. Just for right, what, and a WAV file has more, has more information on it than, uh, than the MP3. Uh, like an AAC 320 kilobit oh, yeah. file. Yeah. yeah, well, the AAC would be say four meg, and you're looking at a WAV file, which is an uncom- more of an uncompressed. Uncompressed, right? Yeah. Okay. So because all my songs on my iTunes are two fifty six. If you if you could if you rip the CD, uh, yeah. you rip it just into WAV format, which I think is right. pretty much what native what's on the CD. Uh, it right. would be a great uh, higher quality sound. Right. Then, okay. Then well, here's here's that, uh, information for this song here. It's a one of it's called uh, it's a Christmas song, uh, just like just a standard one. Uh, it's four point two megabytes in size. It is a two fifty six kilobit sound, and it's not it's a good sound. But I can just imagine how much better it could be. And that goes for two minutes, and that's the size four megabytes. So mm. it's not very big. No, but if you were to to, to uh, just copy that file straight off the CD, it would come out mm-hmm. to be like 30, 35 meg. It'll be a much yeah, but you can only pl- you can only play wave files in media player though, can't you? Uh, no, I, tu- I, I don't think know. Apple, I don't think don't Apple know. plays it. Don't know, but uh, but look, uh, look. If you want to, so anyway, that's the HD sort of stuff. And just to finish off with that, uh, Neil Young's gone on to say uh, further, gone on to say that piracy is the new radio. <laughs> he Kid said, right? Um, uh, whose music has lost 
who has hang on piracy is the new radio said young whose music has long had a rebe- rebellious streak i look at the internet as the new radio i look at the radio as gone 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 so gone. now look i don't know if this is going to come out okay or how this is going to come out because obviously this podcast is compressed as well but maybe you could just hit maybe i oh, look the, the site to go to to get these uncompressed songs and the rolling stones uh, released 27 albums or something uh, in this HD format. Now, it's about 20 bucks an album or something to download, uh, or maybe a little bit that's more. That's pretty cheap. Or, may, or this one here, Explore Albums 36. But that's, that's hdtracks.com. So hdtracks.com. Now, I've, look, I'll pick one that, a song that we all know, and I don't know if this is going to come out like as, as clear as whatever, but locally when I played it, you can, you can hear that it is... You can, um, you can hear the other instruments in the background that you wouldn't normally hear, right? And it's crisp, if you know. Yeah, it, it's, you can, it's like it, even a single thing crisp. like a, like a what you call it, you know, a yeah. triangle or a thin, you know, yeah. Look, so I'll, I'll just play a little bit here and see if you guys think that um, it's any different. Yeah, you can hear it. Yep. You think that's a bit? You can hear everything. It's look the quality of what's coming through might be less because your the audio stream is compressed. Mm. But the point is, you can hear all the instruments in the background. Yeah. Now I'll just give you. Yeah, a, you can hear the guy banging the stimble. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll give you this little, just another clip of more of a, of a slower, sort of a softer song, just to get more of an idea. She comes and goes. Now, that song is, in my ears, that is spectacular. You can do these songs just to have a three, little two 20-second play or whatever. But, oh, go and have a listen to that one at home on, boy, on your own computer, Ruby Tuesday. Go and have a listen to that. What a, what a beauty. What a beauty. We've got drums going off in the right ear. I've got cool. REM on here. There you go. If you're an REM fan, they've got the, they've got the whole, the whole uh, Out of Time album on here. Yeah, for, but... Uh, well, how much? That was the first time I actually heard Ruby Tuesday in on this in the HD format. I've never heard it like that before. That, that just sounded great. It sounded like he was he's sitting in front of me, not on my lap, but pretty close. <laughs> yeah, good on you. <laughs> but yeah, so um, yeah, so H HD tracks. Where are, where where are, where are, are our HD tracks? I got a, I had a graphic somewhere. I had a little graphic, but graphics for some reason seem to be playing up tonight. I don't know why. HD tracks. HD tracks. Oh, the sounds all mucked up. There, there you go. go. But anyway, go and have a listen to them. And what? And and when you come back from listening to HD tracks, I suggest you go to the AussieTechS.com.au website, which is now up live, functioning well. Uh, have a check out the forum while you're there. And also, uh, if you haven't joined up to Audible, let's go and join up. Click on the Audible link, the banner, which is just about on every page. And uh, just click on that if you haven't joined up and sign up and you get a free book. Get your free first book for free. And if you continue to continue to partake in the Audible uh, subscription, well done. Well done to you. And um, Eric, you've uh, another another Audible pick this week. Yes, and I actually uh, downloaded this one a couple of days ago and I've started listening to it. It's called um, Inside Apple. No surprises there. Uh, In- the... Secrets behind the past and the future success of Steve Jobs' iconic brand. Uh, the publisher summary. In, inside Apple, Adam Lasinski, it's read by the author. Uh, Adam Lasinski provides listeners with insight on leadership and innovation. He introduces Apple business concepts such as the DRI, Apple's practice of assigning directly responsible individuals to each task, and the Top 100, an annual event that the Top 100 up-and-coming executives were transported to a secret retreat with company founder Steve Jobs. Now, he's interviewed ex-employees, current employees. It's all very hush-hush and whatnot. And it's a pretty good insight on how he did things, you know, aside from the yelling and everything that we hear about from the book that was written by um, Walter Isaacson. Yep. And this is the actual, you know, what does he do? How does he get people motivated? Aside from the yelling and everything, and what's, what's all the secrecy? Explain the secrecy. What is it really all about? So it's not a bad book. So All right, it's now you've got a little now. grab. 
I have got a little grab, and you just tell me if this is coming through. And I've got a little graphic for the little graphic. One who exhibited personality traits, narcissism, whimsy, for the last time, was a different breed of CEO. One who exhibited personality traits, narcissism, whimsy, disregard for the feelings of others, that society normally dismisses as negatives. But are they? For the way Apple does business and the way its executives manage the company fly in the face of years of business school teaching, begging the question, is Apple's success unique or is Apple onto something the rest of the business world ought to be emulating? It is fitting that Jobs' last official act was reviewing an iPhone, given that Apple's reinvention and domination of the smartphone category four years earlier had demonstrated the company's and Jobs' singular strength. When it launched the iPhone in 2007, Jobs had turned Apple upside down to make it happen. He envisioned the iPhone as a revolutionary device combining the convenience of a smartphone with the music storage and listening capabilities of an iPod. If marrying these two inventions wasn't enough of a challenge, there was the additional pressure that the resulting device needed to have a design snob-worthy look, a user-friendly software interface, and a wow factor. Touch-sensitive glass screen, anyone? All right. There you go. All right. So inside Apple, our Eric's Audible pick this week. I'm, I'm listening to it right now. Now, you, you can get that one. Looks like that could be got for free. So you could use your credit to get that one for free and keep it forever. AussieTechHeads.com.au. Click on the Audible link, sign up. Well done. Well done to you. All right. Now, what else have we got? I had, did I have something about um, to go on from that? I can't remember. We have a viewer email. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, now, now Eric got an email through the last fortnight because I think it came in last yes. week and we, we were sort of uh, hashing it around, but Eric didn't have to hash for too long. He knew the answer. So, um, Eric, what's the e do you want me to read the email? Oh, no, I've got it here. I can, I can read it. All right. Hey, Glenn, I'm a big fan of the podcast. Listen every week. Thanks for putting out such a great show. I have a few questions that I think Eric would be able to help me out with, especially being an accountant and a Mac guru. So lying... <laughs> flying. I have an iMac. Okay, his first question is this. I have an iMac that is about four years old and due for a bit of an upgrade. I heard a couple of weeks back Eric talking about MacSales.com to buy components to upgrade the Mac. I only have one gigabyte of RAM at the moment, so I'll definitely be getting more RAM. How much will I be able to get? I have three 20 gigabyte hard drive at the moment and it's about full. Would it be worth getting another internal drive? or just get an external to plug into the back? Okay, so that's two two questions. He's running Leopard yep. at the moment and want to upgrade to Lion, so now would be a good time to get a bigger internal drive if that's the way to go. Mm. Okay. I know you have multiple internal drives on a PC, but is, is it still the case on a Mac? Generally on a Mac, I'll answer this one first, that they have one drive because you can only fit one drive into the iMac because it's, it's just a thin device. So that's his... Is First there, questions with four subsections, and he's got another one in a minute. I'll answer that. Do you know what what right. size drives do they take, as in physical size? They can try, they can take a proper, uh, what size drive? I think three and a half. Right, and um, yeah, and what They'll size? They'll take probably up to a gigabyte, a terabyte. Right, okay. Depending on the model, depending on the yep. model. Yeah. But he should be able to get at least between a five hundred gigabyte and a seven fifty gigabyte in there. Mm, that's and plenty. The best thing to do is this: you go onto maxsales dot com. There's a little button there that says Upgrade My Mac. And you click that button and it asks you what sort of Mac that you've got. And then it says, right. okay, what year is it? And you click, click, click. And the best way to find out what uh, Mac you've got or what year it goes, go to the Apple symbol in the top left-hand corner and click About Mac. And all right. the details about the Mac come through. Okay. You click, on, click on More Info. I should have done this with you. but yeah. about the Mac comes through. Now, the thing is, and it'll tell you, okay, for your model Mac, this is the speed. This is the gigahertz, uh, megahertz speed or gigahertz speed. And it's running this type of processor and blah, 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 blah. You plug all that into the website and it'll tell you what RAM to buy, what hard drive to buy and how much. Mm, nice. Like I was just looking on here. Like Obviously, you can hook if you need more space, you can hook it up to a, a, a NAS and they've got some... Um 
some extra storage here. You can have, what, up to one terabyte plus one terabyte. So you can have up to two terabytes in a little unit. This Guardian Max Maximus Mini, $214. That's all right. Yeah, that's not bad. Now, the thing is with the Mac, though, the iMac, is that I would not, and I advise against doing it yourself. You have to go to an Apple store and get them to do it because to get into the iMac, you need... You know when you see those glaziers with the with the big suction cups yeah. to remove glass? Oh, you right. will need to know how to use that. Oh, jeez. So you because can you, cannot, you can take in your part, can you? And say, can you put this in? I would say that you might. I would before he buy you buy anything, ask them first if they will if you can bring it in, and will they do it with external parts, mm. or or and they'll, and they'll tell you. Um, you I wouldn't do it. Because you cannot just unscrew the back of an iMac. Yeah. You have to actually take it in and they'll do it. It doesn't take them long. You'll pick it up the next day. Or even, you know, depending how busy you are, they'll pick them up that afternoon. So you've had um, this done? I haven't had it done. I've had other seen other people who had it done. Well, I would and, even... Um, what, could, I, could I suggest that if you had a problem with the Mac store, you just go to find your next Byte store. They'd do it. Wouldn't they'd they? do it. Any Apple mm. premium reseller will do it. Yeah. It doesn't have to be an Apple store. As long as it's someone that deals wholly for, with Apple stuff, like, like Nextbyte or some of the others. There's only one or two others. Um, if you had a MacBook Pro, a laptop, a RAM and hard drive is very easy to, to, um, to flip out and put in yourself. And because MacSales.com has got videos how to do it, and that's how I did mine. It tells you, like, undo this screw, do this, do that, put this in, put that out, put the screws back. So they've got instructional videos for laptops. Hmm. Could you but put, I wouldn't do it for the iMac. So he was also saying about RAM. Would you put your own RAM in? No, same deal. You've got to. You've got to. Everything's got to be done by Apple, and that's why they say. And unfortunately, Josh didn't do this. When you buy an iMac, spec it up completely as much as you possibly can, because it's such a pain in the ass to actually spec it up later. Yeah. You don't save that much to do it. Um, and, you know, these days, RAM, if you bought, if the, Apple said to you, oh, look, we're going to have to do it from here with our components, you'll pay a little bit more, but the RAM that they pay, that you pay for at Apple isn't that much more expensive than, you know, anywhere else. Yeah. Um, you'll pay for the service chart, obviously, the installation cost, but getting them to do it, you'll know that it is under their full Apple warranty, and that's always a little bit of a um, breath of fresh air, knowing that they'll, yeah. they'll back up. They'll, they'll stand behind you should something screw up. So yeah. that's always handy. I would go straight to Apple and do it. If you had a MacBook Pro, you do it yourself, no problem. I've done two MacBook Pros myself with hard drives and Mac with RAM, and it hasn't been an issue at all. So so pimp up your Mac before you buy. Pimp your yeah, Mac. Yeah, pimp it up. <laughs> if right. they're offering you 8 gigs of RAM, grab it. All right, now just quickly, his second part of his question. Uh, he's going back to TAFE. Someone he's told going back to TAFE this year part-time. Someone told me I can claim the TAFE, TAFE fees back on my tax. Is this the case? Can I claim the computer upgrades to help me complete my assignments? Thanks in advance, blah, blah, blah. Um, there was a legal case not long ago, uh, last year, that a student um, had deductions that she put up against her off-study allowance. The tax office knocked it back and said, that's not related to... That in, you cannot deduct that against that income because it's not. She had no other income. Yeah. Because she's because that's not re, that's not related. You know, she was studying. I don't know what she's studying, engineering or something. Yeah. Or law or something like that. And she said, "Well, you know, that's not related to that income is not related to your studies." She won that case against the tax office, and they the, the judge basically said, "Well, she's getting that income because she's studying." That's regardless right. of what's in studying and she's incurring expenses as a result of that study, mm. I'll allow it. Mm. Since then, the tax office has tried or is coming up with draft ruling. I call them draft rulings. They're trying to change that law. They're trying to go against the, the judge's precedent. Right. So be very careful. I can't give you advice on this because everything's on a case by case and I don't want to put my in professional indemnity insurance at risk. So I'm not going to tell you that you can or can't do it. I would suggest you go to the tax office website and put in, um, you can put in, you know, it's like, because their search engine is, is, is being developed by Google. 
So you could put in a similar search terms to Google and, and, and you'll get a similar sort of response back. Yeah. So if you put in something like um, um, computer deductions against, you know, TAFE deductions against, you know, income or whatever. Yes. Right? Yep. So that's one yep. thing. Yep. That's yep. if he was a full-time student. If he's a part-time student, what he's studying has to be related to, to what his current, in, his current job is. Yep. Yep. Fair As enough. a full-time student, he, that woman, that girl was allowed to win that case because the only income she was earning was Aus study and it was related to study because it's Aus study. You yes. know, it's a study income. Yes. So yes. She, she won that one. Yes. Uh, but if, if Josh is doing one job but he's starting, he wants to study for another profession, he's going to have a hard time claiming it. Mm. All right. So, um, yeah. So, and what, and his computer upgrades. So, yeah. Well, well, same thing, I suppose. It's, um, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. TAFE and study. Yeah. So, I suppose it's called income tax for a reason. You've got to have an income to be able to yeah. claim the tax. So, um, with the, um, now with his computer upgrades, if he can justify that his current job, um, he needs this, this equipment to do his current job then that's fine. No problems, yep. But as far as his TAFE stuff goes, that's got to be related to his current job. And what job doesn't need a computer these days? Everyone does email. Jeez. What, Everyone what, does what, email. What? Everyone is doing filing reports. He's um, whatever. That's you know? right. That's right. Now, also, while we're uh, sticking with the courts uh, through the week, now I think we've brushed on this in, in, earlier in previous shows, but Optus has been taken to court by uh, by who, the, who? Who took him to court? The AFL and the NRL or someone like this. Um, but anyway. They tried to drag them in for copyright violations. Yeah, that's right. Yes, because Optus allowed its subscribers to be able to push a button on their phone which would record the free-to-air broadcast of a footy game and enabled the user, you, to be able to watch that back at a later date. Now, the judge has come down and ruled in favour of Optus in this case and said, well, it's just time-shifting. Uh, the the user is pushing the record button. The user is pushing the the play button. That you know, so there's there's no real drama. Uh, it was a two day hearing in December. Optus argued the service allowed customers to time shift in a judgment that totally trounced the codes. Federal Court Justice Stephen Rares ruled Optus TV uh, now the TV now service did not infringe copyright in the broadcast of AFL and NRL games in particular ways that the rights holders alleged. So that the this did not infringe the copyright. Because the users made the record, made the decision. That's right. He also found in the user, rather than Optus, who was then responsible for electronically transmitting the recording or making it available online by clicking the play button. However, the justice said that some issues might still be need to be resolved, including whether Optus infringed copyright with the particular technology it used to make a recording in the format suitable for Apple devices. So all this stuff just goes on and on. Before the decision, Telstra had warned that they'd pull out up from a hundred fifty three million dollar deal with AFL. Uh, the decisions come down against the the, te- the Telstra, and they're still not pulling out. So I it, tried to read that case, and I couldn't understand what he was saying. I couldn't understand how they won it. I just I'm still confused. Who's the Optus? Yeah, I don't understand how they won it because the where they're they're providing like say the Optus is saying, okay, here's a video recorder. Here's your personal video recorder. If you right. want to tape something, you can tape yes. it. If you want to watch it back right. later, you watch it back later. It's yeah. not. It's that's, not. That's legal because it's fair use, right? We can do that now. Yeah, and it's time shifted, which is allowed yeah. under the Copyright Act, the right. legislation. Because because they're not Optus isn't streaming it, re- like streaming it to the masses. They're only streaming it back to the person who's recorded it. So oh, I see. So it's only a personal thing. So right. you either record it on your phone or in the TV Now service. Where are they recording it from? They got access because they've subscribed to an Optus sports channel or something like that. Well, they've like subscribed that. to the Optus TV Now service. Yeah, So and it's only free-to-air broadcast, so there's nothing dissimilar to the, the guy just, instead of pushing the button on his phone, he just, he's at home pushing the button on his DVD recorder. But, um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, but the, yeah, just something I thought I sort of, had a little bit of a think about with El, you know, Telstra jumping up and down going, we're going to pull out, we're going to pull out, blah, 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 we're not happy with this, and 153 million down the gurgler. But they didn't. They didn't. So I don't think that anyone really took this the matter too seriously, to be honest. Like, if people are going to tape something, they're going to bloody tape yeah, it. exactly. Like, exactly. it doesn't matter. all the time off the TV. 
Yeah, that's right. That's right. Like I think um, with the AFL and Telstra and NRL, they they're actually like they they are streaming it. They would be streaming that live, and which is not what's happening. That we're recording it. They're not getting the stream live. So I don't know, but uh, but it's the same thing as recording it on your PVR at home. And, who, and, you know, all the little tech heads out there, like, I oh know all you guys out there, you've got your little smartphone, you've got your PVR at home, recording this that garbage anyway, and then yep. you just stream it over the internet to your phone anyway. Actually, that, that's so, a good point, because the Slingbox does that. We're going to have Slingbox here, which I wish we did. You know you know how that Slingbox works, right? In the States, they've got this thing called the Slingbox. Um, you get a little box, like a little digital box. Yep. You plug this... Sling box into your PVR, yeah, or your Foxtel or your TV, right? Depending on what you generally get your signal from, yeah. So that's one cable, and then the other cable, Ethernet port, plugs into your internet, right? Yes. And then you've got a, a Sling box app on your iPhone or your iPad, and you can just basically click on the thing on your iPad yep. and watch the recorded shows at home. It streams it to you yes. wherever you are. Well, I can That's do it. Yeah. Exactly the same thing. Well, I can do that now with my iPad, Android, and my home server, and my Windows Media Center. It's, it's all it. it's all doing it. It's all how going on. Doing, how are you doing that, dude? What do you mean? How are you doing that? I know you're not doing anything illegal, but what did you set up to do that? What? Well, the what stuff app? records on the Media Center. Right. Right. Then it. Uh, how are you accessing it? How is it? How are you streaming it to you? Well, there's there's bits of software I've put on the PC, and then there's an app that I put Plex. on the. No, the, uh, look, there's stuff called I Air Video and. Um, sub- right, so you could be at the um, I don't know anywhere at, at the Apple yeah. Store with because yep. it's got a good Wi-Fi connection. Yep. And you can click on your app. Yep. And access your shows. Yep. And even this particular program I've got on the home server will actually transcode the video on the fly, so it it shrinks it before yeah. it sends it, because I don't it need sends it. And then and is it, does it re-encode at your end so you get a good quality back? No, well it just it transcodes down to small because I don't need it on a big fifty-two inch screen. I only need right. it. So you need it stays on the iPad. So it does it sort of recognise the device that you're on and goes right. That's an iPad, so I'll send this size. Or this is you, an iPhone, so I'll send a smaller size? Yeah, um, I think you can do it automatically, or there are settings where you just choose. You can for, you can manually force what size you want to come through. So if you're on a Wi-Fi and you've got your iPad and you want to hook it into the TV where you are, well, you could probably say, I want it a bit bigger than an iPad size, you know, quality. I want it a bit bigger. I want it a bit chunkier quality. And so, yeah, and you just stream it. Like I stream, I, I can stream my DVDs that I've got loaded up on the home server anywhere I go. Anywhere in the world there's an internet connection, I can stream it. Well, you so won't be getting it from freaking Hawaii at 256K. <laughs> well, that was your hotel crap, wasn't it? Oh, garbage. Yeah. Oh, you know what? AT&T, they're very sneaky. I had five, and because my mate, you know, I told you that I, I just coincidence a friend of mine was in the same place at the same time. And he got we, we hacked our phones, our iPhones, so we could get the data and everything like this, right? And that was fine. But it's, it gives you, it tells you it's five bars. Yeah. But suddenly my battery's dying. It's just, just hang on a minute. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. I've got thirty percent left. What's going on? It's struggling. It's struggling. You yeah. know what it is? Apparently, any phone, and that happens here too. If you're an Optus or something like that, your battery will die sooner if your phone is always searching for a good signal. Yes. Because it's always right. just stretching. That's right. With Telstra, as soon as you get back on Telstra, my phone lasts two days because it's not it's it's locked in. It doesn't, doesn't look for anything. It's just so strong that it doesn't need to look. Yep. So anyway, 18, but at least here in Australia, if you've got a bad signal, you look at your aerial, what do you call it, signal strength bar, and yep. you'll see, oh, one bar. You know, yep. It doesn't lie to you. Yes. at <laughs> Oh, no. No signal, but I'm but on the on the oh, on the meter. It says five bars. No. I'm thinking, there's no freaking way, it's five bars. <laughs> no, no, no. But anyway. he was saying the same. His phone was dying at three in the afternoon, and he, he rang me today and said, "How's your Telstra?" I said, "Oh, pretty good." He said, "I haven't charged my phone for two days since I got back from Hawaii." That pricks. Yeah. <laughs> well, meanwhile over there, Amazon Amazon profits have hit a, a slump. I don't know if you read about this, but I don't know what's going on at Amazon. A dramatic 58% decline in net income. Whew. 
the fourth quarter. The, oh, look, I think they took a hit on their Kindle Fire yeah. and a few of their other products to get um, to get people to buy it. You know, they'll mm. bounce back from that. I'm, I wouldn't be too worried about that. Many analysts... Were, know, I'm pretty sure they're not worried about it. Yeah, many analysts were unsure uh, where Amazon would stand in this past quarter with the launch of the much-hyped US $199 Kindle Fire tablet, which Eric does have one. The device wasn't expected to be immediately profitable for Amazon, but the company expected people to purchase media for the device, which obviously that's the whole the ticket. Yeah. Uh, from a revenue standpoint, the company did fairly well with $17.4 billion in sales, a 35% increase from a year ago. The company missed wide on profits with net income decreasing 58% to $177 million or 0.38 of a dollar or 38 cents per diluted share. What's a diluted yeah. share? Oh, look, that's a complicated equity accounting term. Okay, well, don't Hard worry. Hard to explain. <laughs> okay, Hard to explain. compared with the net income of four hundred sixteen million, blah 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 blah. blah. So that's the uh, that's going on over there. Uh, so yes, as Eric said, they'll, they'll bounce back. There's no dramas there. Aussie domain reseller Netfleet has been hacked. Netfleet bills itself as Australia's largest and most active domain name trading website, operated I've by. I've never heard of them. Neither have I. <laughs> operated by a small team of developers. What a load of shit. It admitted that hackers may have stolen customers' name, email, and street addresses, phone numbers, and encrypted credit cards with their expiry date. So, pfft, there you well, go. they shouldn't worry too much because I've never heard of them. They've only probably got a few customers. Yeah, true. Holiday makers have been warned to watch out what you Twitter before you go uh. to the US, especially. Um, this guy, he's he's uh, tweeted free this week for a quick gossip slash prep before I go and destroy America. So he got off in LA airport. Handcuffed, sent back home. There you go. Yeah. So he, he wasn't going too good. Um, and you know, the funny thing is he was Irish. Now, no Irish jokes because they're always being accused of being stupid. Mm. But he was Irish. He was Irish. The Irish National told the Sun newspaper that he and his friend Emily were uh, apprehended at the arrival at Los Angeles International Airport before being sent home. In another tweet. Oh, good trip. He made a reference to comedy show Family Guy, saying that he would be in L.A. in three weeks annoying people and digging Marilyn Monroe up. He told the newspaper that he was questioned for five hours about, about digging up. Welcome, yeah. welcome to the United States of America. <laughs> yes. Now, who are you going to dig up? Now, the Connect has, is out. It's out for Windows with the, the PC. Oh, look, I'm not going to get this. This is ridiculous. Could you make, let's do a podcast with a Connect. Every time I wave my hands up, it'll shut my computer down. <laughs> Skype will go crazy. You won't know what's oh, going on. Oh, God, <laughs> volume controls. It's going crazy. Uh, you'd be like a stop, go, man. Stop, volume, go, stop, go. The, the main... you this to it? If you did this to it. <laughs> oh, that'd be... Is, that'd that's be... Shut, is that the shutdown symbol? Yeah, that'd be instantly sent to Barmer, and he'd put a block on your device. The main... That's right. He only likes penises on the end of fishing lines. The main That's right. Developers, developers, developers. <laughs> the main changes to the Connect hardware for the PC uh, to reflect the close-up and personal nature. Uh, the changes uh, are, oh, wow, a limited, a shorter USB cable. Woohoo! And the inclusion... Yeah, that's worth 250 bucks. Actually, the Connect USB cable on the Xbox is rather long, which is, which is a... Um, <laughs> Which is a which is a pleasing surprise. Uh, I used it for something else. No, I didn't. This one will be. This one will probably be too short. <laughs> yeah, probably. You won't be able to reach anything. Oh, and, and can I just tell you a quick shout out to the guys that came and installed my cable? You losers. Okay, now what cable? Uh, what cable are you talking about? <laughs> my internet. I don't know if I had a go at them not when I, that it was installed. So I thought I'd have a go now. They gave oh, me. me they, they gave they me do? the absolute, absolute to the to the half millimetre minimum cable from the wall to the motor. Oh, yes. This is the, the actual cable, the yes. coax. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. the yeah. absolute minimum. And, yeah. like, it was, uh, I, I said to him, oh, look, just chuck it up on the on the shelf up there. You know, just chuck so it up. He, so just, he, cut it, he gave you a metre. Yeah, or less. I said, put just chuck the thing up <laughs> on the shelf. I'll fix it up later. I couldn't fix it up because the frigging thing was too short. I said, so you couldn't drop it on the floor. You had to run a cable up to it. I went out and got another cable. The, oh, really? The cable was crap. So thank you. Well, that's that's a newbie mistake. Thank you, pushead. Now, now going back to the USB cable, the the uh, it made me mad. I was still mad, but anyway, <laughs> I'll get over it. 
<laughs> that's, that's what happens when you, you haven't had a, had a beer for three weeks. You get all jittery. But uh, the inclu- uh, um, yeah, so a limited, shorter USB cable and the inclusion of a dongle to ensure the device plays friendly with PCs hosting a range of other USB devices. Meanwhile, new firmware will enable near mode. That will allow the device's depth camera to actually see objects as close as 50 centimetres. Uh, with graceful degradation down to 40 centimeters. Now, Wingo, Windows compatible hardware recommended price. Now, this is a bit of a kicker: $249, as compared to the Xbox ver- Xbox version, 130 bucks. Mm. Shorter cable, cost more. But uh, but so, also they, so obviously they want to sell lots of them. Yes. So, uh, so let's well, double the price and see how we go. Yeah, look, they will sell. They'll, they'll sell a bucket load. The, look, the cable's yeah, not the only the, thing. You know what? But no one will use it. They'll use it and go, oh, this is a piece of crap. Yeah. He said, the, the, the general manager, Craig Eisler, told, um, told, told, told the BBC newspaper that they, they subsidized, that they had subsidised the Xbox version. They recouped the money from the games, so that's why the price difference. But the, but the, the new one for the PC actually um, holds another... Uh, it has... Um, it includes a control mechanism, uh, just different things inside it, different sensors for the close-up mm-hmm. business. Mm-hmm. Just I don't trust anything Microsoft does yeah. anymore. Uh, they shifted uh, uh, Xbox 361, shifting over 8 million units between November 10 and January 11. It has resulted in several innovative uses, including a control mechanism for a search and rescue robot and a scanner to create blueprints for 3D printers. Recent figures suggest more than 18 million Xbox 360 Connects have been sold. So, mm. so. It's a lot. Mm. Mm. Yeah, a lot. Now, uh, this is my last story. Did you have anything to add before we, we sort of... See. Pardon? Let, uh, let me see. Well, while you're having a look, I'll just quickly go through... No, I'm done, my friend. All right. Well, I'll, I'll quickly go through. Google won't pull suspected malicious Android apps, and this is probably their problem. So Mandak is trying to call attention to 13 applications that have showed up in the official Android market over concerns they could contain development tools that enable the theft of data. Now, mm. why not pull them? Because it's not it's not against the um, the rules. So they're all, this they're, is why Android is going to the toilet. Yeah. Because there is no quality control. You can just put anything up there. Whatever you want. The baker's dozen of applications carrying names like Counter Elite Force, Balloon Game, allows downloaders to play action, adventure, and puzzle games. They also contain a software development kit known as Apperhand uh, that only that not only installs a search bar on the user's phone, but also allows the distribution distributors to change the user's homepage and add remove bookmarks and shortcuts. Why? Why not remove it? It's annoying. Come on. Um, Google Piece have a... Google will not remove the apps because they do not violate the terms of service. Symantec said in a blog post on Monday that, um, that, that, that they discovered all this, blah, blah, blah. A Google spokesman declined to comment. Uh, look, it just detracts from the whole experience. That's why I feel iTunes and Apple have just n- hit the nail on the head. Why yeah, got the, it all over them. I know, look, I know you should probably read the reviews before you download them. I know, you know, you just don't read the first. But who pre- does? Who's got time for that? Yeah, look, I'll browse through them, uh, but you only you only look at what's on the screen. You only look at say first three, you know, maybe the second page if you're lucky. So yeah, and some of the, a lot of the time those reviews are written by the guy who's right, who's who actually put the hmm. virus in there. And some of the times you get to a stage where no matter what you read, you're always going to find detractors. So you think, well, yeah. you know, oh, just let me try it for myself. Like obviously this guy didn't yeah. like it. Maybe he was a he was a mong or something, you know. So, He's a mong. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, there's nothing wrong with that. So there's nothing wrong with that. That's right. So and uh, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi is coming national to Hungry Jacks. Fast food franchise mm-hmm. Hungry Jacks has begun rolling out free wireless hotspots to 340 locations around Australia. Whoopie dazzlers, whoopie dazzly doos. Um, so you can get in there, given free 30-minute sessions. So eat your three burgers and your 8,000 buckets of Coke and sit on your backside and just surf the net. That's right. What a life. Love uh, it. 30-minute uh, sessions, 100 mega download over any of their hotspots. We can access an hour-long wireless session in exchange for email registration and a short survey. Oh, imagine doing that every time you go there. Short oh survey. Oh, God. Can you imagine? How many kilos you put on you this Like week? our burgers? No. Yeah. Are you coming here again? No. Do you want Wi-Fi? Yes. How, 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 how did you put on any weight since you last came? <laughs> Putting on weight, just filling in this survey. The Idiots. rollout followed an 18-month trial in, uh, in, in four Victorian Hungry Jack stores. Uh, so there you go. The store internet connections were upgraded to ADSL 2. Thank you. 
would have been pretty poor. High torque. <laughs> high torque. I bet you'd have throttled it. Oh, I don't know. They reckon they, they can have 20 on at a time before it sucks. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll put, put cable in there. Yeah, there you go. There you go. All right. Now, if, if, Never there's, mind. if there's anything you get out of tonight's show or this week's show, is go to that HD, what was it? HD, HD Tracks. HD Tracks. It's, it's, it's great. That's great. Have a just have a listen to it, and um, if if you like something that's on there, I, I would I would suggest just spend your thirty bucks, or whatever. Buy it. It's great. Oh, yeah. I, I'm going to. I'm going to go and download an album. I'll yeah. tell you about it next week. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Well, that's about. Uh, oh, we didn't mention where Will was. Sorry, Will. Will's uh, <laughs> Will was still at work tonight. <laughs> Sorry, Will. I oh, no, Will's <laughs> been here all the time. We just didn't want to talk to him. <laughs> oh, you got any stories, Will? No, no, he no, was he, right. He's, uh, yeah, he's right. He's good. He's Bugger good. Him. He's, yeah, he's, he's, he's in uh, sleep land. All right. Now, um, so thanks to the lounge. Thanks for coming in. Lounge uh, live.thesecrethub.com. Thanks to the guys that listen on the radio.thesecrethub.com. Look, I'm going to probably get a, a video.thesecrethub.com. So instead of doing the YouTube blurb, we'll just go video.thesecrethub.com. Does that work for you, Eric? Yes, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> If it works for I didn't know what you said there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. Anyway, <laughs> um, the paper that comes out twice a day with all the tech stories that uh, from oh, that just gets gathered up, you know, from around the place, paper.aussietechheads.com.au. Uh, thanks to all the listeners overseas. They're getting quite a few. Thanks for everyone that's hit the new webpage. Great. Great to see people yeah. coming in, hitting the webpage. You can go and see, uh, take part in the forum. We need some more forum uh, hits, though. I know the forum's been down for a while. And I know that the, the posts are uh, ageing because of it had been down for a while. But uh, jump in and uh, have a say on any topic you want. Start a topic, have a say. Register and have a, have a go. Have a go, you mugs. And um, yes. the show notes are up every week under show notes on the page. Eric's audible tips for the past so many weeks are all up there as well. And, of course, Garth's uh, video in its, um, in its, I don't know, its own little thing. So you don't have to watch the whole show if you just want to watch Garth's review. You can do that. Too. Grabs, little grab, the little grab. That's that's the that's, Garth's uh, grabs. That's what I'm looking for. All right, now if you uh, want to contact us, you can call or you can email us at uh, Glenn, Will, or Eric with a K at AussieTechHeads.com.au. You can even call email Garth at Garth at AussieTechHeads.com.au. And uh, that's about it. That's about it. Call into the show live at uh, Aussie Tech Heads on the Skype. And uh, yeah, good stuff. Send some in emails in. The head, the head is having a holiday. He will be back. He will be back. Fear not. When he um, when he calms down, he's been a bit bit uh, obnoxious of late, so he hasn't had a chance to get yeah. on. I've, I've confined him to the uh, to to the doghouse. <laughs> yes, obnoxious little person. He is. Oh, he's a shocker. But all right. Anyway, thank you, Eric. Thanks for coming on again this week. Welcome. No problem. And, uh, chewing the fat next up, fellas. Oh, of course. Chewing the fat. Chewing the fat available on the iTunes store. And uh, also, what else? Yes. Um, yeah, Will does his talkback tech on Tuesday nights. So if you if you feel like a relax and uh, just listen to some, um, some banter about, oh, what they were talking about, cars or something last week. goes off on tangents, but uh, that's all right. Have a listen to live.thecigarethub.com on Tuesday nights. So anyway, until next week, it's goodbye from all of us. Ta-da. See ya.